yet we are not allowed to depart with this failure. This unfortunately means that we're going to have to uh, taxi back towards our uh, parking position and have maintenance flown in. Tourists traveling on KL 1196, you will get a new message directly from KLM. This is the captain speaking. Welcome to ACS Star Alliance and this flight to uh, London Heathrow flight. Passengers traveling on the BA 247 to Sao Paulo. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning my fellow travelers and welcome back to yet another adventure here on Strictly Flying. I hope you're all doing fantastic on today's episode. I am flying or at least I'm trying to fly to Brazil from Norway. However, as you saw in the intro, things didn't go exactly according to plan. Now in fact, this entire trip would turn out to be a complete disaster from start to finish. Even my return flight would turn out to be a complete chaos. However, I will get back to those details later in the video. So please join me on this chaotic adventure as we try to get ourselves down to South America from start to finish. And please remember that in all of my videos there are timestamps that you can skip ahead to the parts that you want to watch. So let's get started. My original flight consisted of three legs in total, with the first leg being with KLM Royal Dutch Airlines from the Norwegian city of Stavanger on flight KL1196 to the Dutch capital Amsterdam, leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. In Amsterdam I would have a two-hour layover before my next leg with Air France to Paris leaving at 9.30 and then a one-hour and 20-minute layover in Paris before my final flight to Fortaleza in Brazil with Air France leaving at quarter past past 12 and arriving in Fortaleza at 5.30 in the afternoon, giving me a total travel time of approximately 16 hours. I had already checked in and was having some breakfast in the lounge watching the aircraft that would take us to Amsterdam, being loaded with baggage, totally unaware of the drama that would unfold in the next couple of hours. We were called to board the aircraft on time and everything went according to plan. We pushed back from the gate and started up the engines and it wasn't until we had been sitting idle for about 50 minutes that I could sense that something was not right. Eventually the captain came on the loudspeaker and broke the bad news. Fortunately, during the start of our, one, our engines we discovered one of our um, hydraulic systems. Uh, the uh, well, the main hydraulic system actually which operates the landing gear and has two pumps. Um, one of the pumps is a backup pump and that one is uh, unfortunately not working. Um, we need that one since if we, the other one fails we are not able to operate our landing gear and as you can imagine that's quite useful for landing. Um, so um, yeah, we are not allowed to depart with this failure. This unfortunately means that we're going to have to uh, taxi back towards our uh, parking position and have maintenance flown in. I am uh, really sorry for this, uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't uh, physically put you in danger of perhaps not having the uh, well, the use of the landing gear upon landing. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to of course take that chance. Um, What's going to happen now is we're going to taxi back towards the parking position, have the gate connected. You'll be able to disembark the aircraft and uh, once we know, um, once I can have a, a chat with our company about the follow-up, if they send another plane or not, so we'll uh, of course update you with their information. But for now, the important thing is that we are not going to be flying to Amsterdam on this aircraft and we are going to be a taxi back towards the gates. Um, and we'll be standing um, on the exit. We're disembarking friend to answer any questions you might have, but for the moment, please remain seated. We are first going to taxi back towards our gate. Thank you for your understanding. 
Now I would like to make it perfectly clear that I support the captain 100% in his decision not to fly. Safety must always come first and these things happen from time to time. So after disembarking the aircraft I headed back to the lounge and contacted KLM for alternative flights as I already knew that I had missed my connections in both Amsterdam and Paris. Now after talking with KLM and getting an alternative flight, I collected my baggage. Now I just needed to collect my taxi vouchers, so I made myself back to the KLM check-in counters, where I was met by absolute chaos. Passengers traveling on KLM 1196, you will get a new message directly from KLM regarding your rerouting, your rebooking. We are not allowed to do anything. KLM will contact you directly with a new flight. After collecting my taxi voucher, I headed back home as my new alternative flight wouldn't leave until late in the evening. Now my flight would leave at 10 to 6 in the afternoon to London Heathrow with SAS Scandinavian Airlines and in London I would have a two-hour layover before my next flight with British Airways that would take me all the way south to Sao Paulo and then finally a domestic flight with LATAM Airlines from Sao Paulo to Forleza arriving in Forleza at quarter to 12 the following day giving me a total flying time of 22 hours. Now, KLM did also give me the option of flying my original route via Amsterdam and Paris, leaving Stavanger on Sunday at 6 o'clock in the morning. However, this would mean that I would arrive two days later, so I opted for the longer flight with British Airways via Sao Paulo instead. At least then I would only lose one day in Brazil. After returning to the airport, I headed straight for the SAS check-in counter to check in for my new flight. Now, unfortunately, this is where things would get complicated yet again. Since SAS is a member of Star Alliance and British Airways is a member of the One World Alliance, SAS was not able to check me in for the flight to Sao Paulo. So that meant that I had to get myself to the British Airways check-in counter at London Heathrow Airport to get my boarding card for my final flights to Brazil. Although that I had two hours layover in London, I would arrive at a different terminal than my departing flight to Brazil and having to find a chicken counter on top of everything else just meant another stress factor to an already very stressful day. However, there was no turning back now. I checked in for my flight to London and made my way to the gate, looking out of the window at the thick fog rolling in over the airport and praying that this would not cause any further issues. About 30 minutes prior to departure and there was no aircraft to be seen at the gate. At this point I was starting to wonder what on earth I had done to deserve this, but I soon realized I just have to calm down, as everything is out of my control anyways. As I had given up all hope, the aircraft finally appeared through the thick fog and eventually rolled up to the gate. And when the jetway was connected, we had about 15 minutes left until departure. Now, I knew that I had some time in London before my connecting flight to Brazil, but then I remembered that I don't even have a boarding card for my flight to Brazil yet. But like I said, everything is out of my control at this point. Eventually, we made ourselves on board and settled down in a very cramped economy seat, very typical of SAS Scandinavian Airlines. Lucky for me, the flight is just under two hours, and right now, I just want to get moving. Good afternoon, this is uh, the captain speaking. Welcome to SAS Star Alliance. And this flight to uh, London, Heathrow, flight 1 will be one hour and 30 minutes. We expect good flying conditions. We are about 10 minutes late now, and this is because uh, the aircraft arrived late from Oslo due to other problems in Oslo.
Finally, we said goodbye to the rainy and wet Norwegian city of Stavanger and headed for a straight course to London. Now, flying with SA Scandinavian Airlines is very underwhelming, with basic service on board offering coffee or tea for free and charging you for anything else in economy class. But at least the Airbus A320neo is equipped with power outlets to charge your devices, which is always a good thing when you have a long trip ahead of you. Our aircraft on this flight had the registration Sierra Echo Romeo Oscar Romeo, and this aircraft is currently four years old. So finally we landed at London Heathrow Airport and that concludes the first leg of our journey. During the flight we even managed to gain some speed and make up for the delay and actually arrived 5 minutes early at Terminal 2. And all I need to do now is to find my way to Terminal 3 to the British Airways check-in counter to get my boarding card for my next flight to Brazil. And I still have just under two hours left before the gate closes, so as long as there are no more surprises in store, everything should be smooth sailing from here. Eventually, I found a British Airways service desk and managed to print out my boarding card. Now, I asked for a window seat, however, I had already been assigned to an aisle seat in the very back of the aircraft. Not surprising at all, since I do not have any status whatsoever with the One World Alliance anymore. But at this point, I'm just happy that it didn't assign me a seat in the middle, as that has got to be the worst seat you can have in economy class on a 12 hour long flight. So at this point, I can finally find myself to the gate and relax a few minutes before boarding. Now, I have flown with British Airways many times before and I was for a time being a One World Silver member before moving on to KLM and Air France's Flying Blue program, mostly because of the better flight connections to Brazil, but also because of British Airways' higher fares. And after having a closer look at my boarding card, I could see that British Airways does also board their flights according to zones, or in British Airways' case, according to group numbers. Now, since I fly a lot with KLM and Air France, I am and have been a Flying Blue Platinum member for just over five years now, which is the absolute highest level that you can reach within the program. And this is only flying in economy class. And this means that I am always the first to board the flight right after business class passengers. On this flight, however, I am sitting all the way in the back of the aircraft and I am boarding in group number nine, the very last group to be called. 
Now, I did not expect KLM to purchase any higher classes for me on this alternative flight. However, this was just a reminder of why it is so important to stay loyal to one airline over time, even if it costs you a few dollars more, especially if you fly a long haul as much as me. Being loyal and climbing up the status ladder of your airline just makes the entire experience so much better better. In this case, I felt like I waited forever before my boarding group, the very last group, was finally asked to board the aircraft. Sorry, sir. Although it's been a little over six years since I last flew with British Airways, things haven't really changed much on board as they still play the classical music while boarding and in general still have a very British atmosphere on board. My seat, however, was a little disappointing, only offering me roughly three fingers from my knees to the seat in front. Right now, I'm just thankful that I have an aisle seat so I can stretch my long legs whenever things get too tight. Great pleasure to be one of the pilots uh, flying you down to the Sao Paulo tonight on this PA operated Airbus A350 1000 service. Joining me in the flight deck in command of the aircraft uh, this evening is uh, Captain Will Duffin and uh, our colleague also joining us up here with the uh, length of flight is uh, Senior First Officer uh, Graham Sturgeon. And leading our excellent uh, cabin crew team of 12 for us uh, this evening, our in-flight manager is uh, Scott Lockett. Thanks first of all for putting the aircraft on time, as we say everybody is now on board, all the doors are closed, we're ready to go, we should be leaving the gate here in the next couple of minutes, uh, nicely on schedule. Our aircraft on this flight is an Airbus A350-1000 and has a registration Golf X-Ray Whiskey Bravo November. And according to Flight Radar 24, this aircraft is brand new. Size back on, would urge you please to return to your seats and ensure those seatbelts are securely fastened. Our flight time down to uh, San Paolo tonight is approximately 11 hours, affecting pretty good conditions uh, en route. And with that flight time, I'm hopeful of arriving into San Paolo tomorrow morning. Nice. On the schedule. One of the points to note on safety is as we uh, start our taxi out, the crew will be running through a uh, safety briefing. I would appreciate if you give that uh, some attention while submitting through that. Please ensure that this is also attached for takeoff and landing. British Airways operates with three classes and have adopted their own name for each class, calling business class for Club World and Premium Economy for World Traveler Plus an economy class simply as world traveler. As you can see, my seat is in the second last row in the very back of this A350. Now, since this was a night flight and the lights were turned off during the majority of the flight, I wasn't really able to show you all of the features of this economy class seat. But what I can tell you is that the seats in economy class are in a 3x3x3 layout. And I'm really grateful that they didn't opt to squeeze in four seats in 
the middle row because the leg space that the economy seats offer is right on the limit of what I find is acceptable for such a long flight. The entertainment screen was great with a good selection of movies and of course you will find a USB port underneath the screen to charge your phone or your tablet. The screen also tilts outwards so you will have the best view and experience whenever the person in front of you reclines. The seats are comfortable enough for a long flight and you have an adjustable headset also. You are also provided with a pillow and a blanket. All in all, the seats in economy class are good and the only big negative is the leg space, which unfortunately is a trend that most airlines are now pursuing nowadays. I still find the space on KLM long haul to be much better, especially in economy class. Times. If the cabin air supply fails, oxygen will be provided. A mass will appear automatically. We eventually left London on time and headed south, hugging the coast of France, Spain and Portugal before crossing the Atlantic with a straight course for Brazil. Soon after takeoff, the cabin crew came around serving us drinks and a small bag of pretzels. I asked for a glass of red wine and to my surprise I was handed not one, but two bottles of red wine, as were the other passengers. When their dinner service arrived, I was even asked if I wanted more wine, but I kindly declined the offer as I hadn't even finished my first serving. And the food was also a pleasant surprise. We were given a choice between chicken or pasta, and I chose the chicken. The food was very tasty and the serving size was good as well. The dessert, salad, bread and cheese was some of the best I've had in economy class. All in all, I have to give British Airways 5 stars on food and service in economy class for this flight. After the meal service, I headed to the lavatory and yet again I was surprised at how clean everything was. The lavatory was extremely cramped on such a large aircraft, however everything was clean, the floors were dry and there were now foul smells. When I returned to my seat I quickly fell asleep, not surprising as I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning and calling my day stressful would be an understatement. And the remainder of the flight was very uneventful and the cabin crew frequently came around offering water or juice, which was nice. The breakfast service started about an hour and a half before arrival and again I was pleasantly surprised about the quality and quantity of food. I was served a delicious English breakfast with some orange juice and even the coffee tasted great. with a quick update of our progress for you. Do hope you have been enjoying the flight and enjoying the service and making good progress towards uh, San Paolo. We're still in the cruise moments at uh, 40,000 feet till 2007 very shortly. I'm routing almost in a straight line now towards uh, San Paolo itself. We're overlanding towards the east. Uh, we've got uh, approximately 100 and... Uh, 40 miles to run now to uh, touch down. So that's going to take us about 35 minutes actually now. We're looking at uh, touching down at uh, just before 5.40 uh, local time in the morning. Let's reset your watch. Reset your watches there. The time is of course three hours behind uh, London time. So in San Paolo right now, it is five minutes past five in the morning. Weather for our arrival, pretty reasonable start today. So it's just starting to think about coming up. Uh, it's just a very light scattering of cloud, uh, almost calm conditions. Temperature currently 17 degrees Celsius, and that will warm up uh, quite quickly uh, during the morning. So, touching down is the same about uh, 35 minutes time. Now. Thank you. So as we started our approach into Sao Paulo, I tried to think of some critique, but apart from the poor leg space, all I can really say is that British Airways has really delivered in all aspects on this flight. The attentive and polite crew, the cleanliness of the aircraft and of course the quality of food all in economy class was a big surprise and had British Airways had better connections between Norway and Brazil I would seriously consider on switching back to British Airways 
once again. So finally I made it to Brazil in Sao Paulo, although I do have one domestic flight remaining before finally arriving in Fortaleza, Latam Airlines had also assigned me a seat in the very last row, in a seat without any windows, and I was so exhausted at this point that I probably slept over two hours on this three and a half hour domestic flight up north to Fortaleza. But before I say goodbye, I promise to tell you about the rights you have if something like this should ever happen to you. If traveling within Europe or on a European carrier, flying either to or from Europe, you do have the right to compensation if your flight gets delayed or cancelled. If you have never heard of EU regulation number 261, then all I can say is that this is a rule imposed on airlines operating in the EU that gives passengers several rights. The regulation is extremely comprehensive and I'm not going to go into every single detail of this regulation. However, I will leave a link to the entire documentation in the description of this video so you can have a look for yourself. The most important part though is described right here in Article 7. There it states that you have the right to be compensated a fixed amount depending on the length of your flight. In my case, the trip being more than 3,500 kilometers, I do have the right to 600 euros in case of a cancellation, and in this case, 600 euros in cash from KLM. Now, please note that I said the trip and not the flight being more than 3,500 kilometers. The distance is calculated on the distance of the departure city to the final destination city on your ticket. So, since the distance from Norway to Brazil is more than 3,500 kilometers and I arrived at my final destination over five hours late, I do have the right to this compensation. Keep in mind though that there are certain times that you do not have the right to be compensated, such as factors that are out of the airline's control, which can be bad weather for example. Now, the way you go about claiming compensation varies a lot from airline to airline. Some companies actually deliberately try to hide such information in hope that the customer will eventually just give up. Luckily for me, KLM has made it very easy to navigate to the page where you can file for compensation. Simply scroll all the way down on their website and click on all contact options. From there, click on delayed and cancelled flights and then finally click on request compensation. Now in my case, KLM granted the request of 600 euros straight away and it took just over a week from I filed the request until the money was transferred to my account. Now, if the airline refuses to compensate you or you simply can't find the link to file the claim, there are dozens of online services that will actually claim your compensation on your behalf and will even fight the case for you, just in case the airline refuses to pay. But please do keep in mind that they do take quite a substantial fee for this service, so it is highly recommended you try to do this yourself first. 
Now, in the very beginning of the video, I said that this trip was a complete disaster from start to finish, including the return trip back to Norway. Well, have a look at this flight from Amsterdam to Sao Paulo on March the 11th, the same day as my return flight to Norway. Now, this is also the aircraft that I was booked on my return ticket. The aircraft actually declares an emergency over Spain and returns to Amsterdam. I still have no information on what was the cause of the emergency, but all I can say is that I was booked on the next flight out of Rio de Janeiro instead the following day. So once again I filed for compensation and this was also approved and I received a total of 1200 euros for a ticket that I only paid 1100 euros for. Now this might sound great being able to travel for free but in my case I missed a day of work and the stress and hassle you have to deal with such as wasting time on the telephone with the airline and waiting in airports then I would rather the flights depart on time. However, it is great to know that this rule for compensation exists and at the end of the day, I think KLM and Air France have been outstanding in every way to find an alternative flight and a solution to the problem. So that's it. It has been a, a long journey and a long video. And if you are still watching, then I'm hoping you enjoyed this content. It will give me a like on this video and hopefully also subscribe to my channel as that helps me out immensely. So the next time your flight is delayed or cancelled, remember to pursue your rights and get compensated. Thank you. Safe travels. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao.